Now the next method is the sweep. The sweep method is mainly used when you have created a, a specific type of mesh cell over a surface and that you want to sweep that mesh in the depth of your geometry, for example to create a structured mesh. Now prior to explaining the options of sweep method, we can easily find the objects and geometries that are capable of being swept by simply right clicking on mesh, going over show and then selecting swipable bodies. For example, for this specific type of geometry, you can see that both of our bodies are capable of being swept to create mesh cells over them. But in this section, we are going to only select a box without selecting the cylinder geometry. Therefore, in front of the geometry, we select the box first and then click on apply. The next thing you should change is the source or target selection. Click on it. Now about the source or target selection, the source is the surface or the face where you have defined your specific type of mesh over it. And the target is the last surface in which you want to sweep your mesh through the depth of your geometry to that surface. Now if you click on the source and target selection setting, you can find different options from manual source in which you have to only define and select your first surface which you have defined that a specific type of mesh cells over it or the manual source or, and target that you have to define the first surface and the last surface that you want to create swept mesh for it. The automatic thin and manual thin options are used for thin geometries and are not in the topic of our tutorial video. For example, if you select the manual source, in front of the source you have to select the surface over which you have defined your specific type of mesh cells. For example, for the box geometry, we are going to select its upper surface. And for example, if you select the manual source and target, along with selecting the source, you have to select a target face. Now to select the target face, you have to select the other face on the other side of the box. Next setting that you should feel is the free face mesh type, which you can again select between two options of quad or tri or all quad. This option has been explained in previous slide utterly. As for the type, you can select between two options of number of divisions and element size. About the number of divisions, when you select this option, you can simply enter the number of mesh cells you want to put in inside the geometry in its depth. While if you select the element size, you, you can enter the size of each element. For example, this time we are going to select number of divisions and then enter the number of mesh cells that we want to put inside the depth of our geometry equal to 10. As for the next option, which is the sweep bias type, you can select the formation, direction, and the distribution of sizes of each element along the depth of your geometry. For example, when you select the first format, which has bigger line on its left, bigger mesh cells will be placed near the source face, and those mesh cells will become smaller when they get nearer to the target face. Also, after selecting any type of bias type, you have to enter a value, which is the ratio of the width of the biggest mesh cell to, to the smallest one. For example, here we enter the value of 3 and then we click on generate button so that we can see how the mesh cells are created. Now as you all probably understood, you can see here that when we select the first format for the bias type, the biggest mesh cell will be placed near the source face, while the smallest one will be placed near the target face. Also if you click on the node selecting command and then click on the adjacent nodes for the biggest mesh cells, and then click on the adjacent nodes for the smallest mesh cell, you can see that the width of the 
biggest missile is three times bigger than the width of the smallest one. Now as you saw, I clicked on two adjacent nodes over the biggest mesh cell and you can see the distance between these two is almost 24 cm. And now that I have selected two adjacent nodes for the smallest mesh cell, you can see their distance is almost equal to 8 cm. Therefore, you can understand that the distance between the adjacent nodes for the biggest mesh cells is three times bigger than the distance between the adjacent nodes for the smallest one. You can easily change the formation or direction of the mesh cells over the sweep command by simply changing the bias type. For example, you can see here that this time we are going to select the type of mesh cells which their biggest mesh cell will be placed on the middle section of our geometry. Now as was mentioned, you can see the biggest mesh cells are placed in the middle section of our geometry. Also, it is worth mentioning that this swap method is mainly used to create a structured mesh for types of geometries like boxes, cylinders, and generally for the objects where you can extrude the cross-section to reach the final 3D object.